Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here on Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and apologies if you hear any noise in the background. It's raining and there's thunder here in Bengaluru right now. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about this week was the launch of Olay Electric's S1 and S1 Pro scooters. Now, you're not gonna see these on the roads just yet, but if you pre-ordered one of these scooters, then you're actually gonna be able to pay for it starting from September 8th, and then Olay Electric is gonna be shipping these out at some point early on in October. So that's really exciting, but even more exciting than that were these specs for these two scooters. So the S1, the standard base model for this scooter, has a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour, and the S1 Pro has a top speed of 115 kilometers an hour, which I didn't realize was a legal top speed for a scooter, but apparently it is. And then when it comes to range, the S1 will be able to take you 121 kilometers on a single charge, and the S1 Pro 181 kilometers on a single charge. Then when it comes to charging, it's gonna take you roughly six hours to charge these scooters at home, but if you go to one of Ola's hyperchargers, it'll take you 18 minutes to get it to 50%. And the scooters come with a lot of really interesting smart features too. For example, smart unlock. So the scooter will just unlock and you'll be able to drive it if you get close enough. And it'll also lock if you get far enough away. It's got a really beautiful and customizable UI. So you can make the UI look more vintage or eco-friendly or futuristic. You can customize the sound that the scooter makes while it's accelerating and slowing down. And if you wanna know more about all of the features and specs of the S1 and the S1 Pro, we'll be putting a link to Ola Electric's launch video in the pinned comment down below. It's really detailed, it's 20 minutes long and a great resource for anybody who's excited about these scooters. But when it comes to pricing, the S1 is priced at 99,999 rupees, whereas the S1 Pro is priced at 1.29 lakh rupees. Now, this is where things start to get interesting because Ola Electric's S1 and S1 Pro weren't the only Indian electric scooters to launch on Independence Day. You also have Simple Energies One, which at least on paper seems to outcompete and outperform Ola Electric's standard S1 in pretty much every single way except for its price. It's priced at 1,9999 rupees, but it has a top speed of 105 kilometers per hour. It's able to charge up to 80% in 2.7 hours. And get this, the range of this scooter is 236 kilometers on a single charge, making it the electric scooter with the best mileage in the world. If you wanna know more about the Simple Energy One, then you can find a link to their launch video in the pinned comment down below, as well as links to everything else that we're gonna be talking about in today's video. But keep in mind, if you decide to watch that video, that Simple Energy is much more of a startup than Ola Electric. They're brand new, they're small, this is their first product. And yes, Ola Electric is also launching their first product, but they're a subsidiary of Ola. So Ola has been around for a while. They've got massive financial backing. Their video is much more polished than Simple Energies, which honestly, their video is a bit rough around the edges, but I think that they mean well. It's just that they're a startup and they're a bit small. If you wanna pre-order a Simple Energy One, it's gonna cost you 1,947 rupees, and they're gonna be shipping these scooters out to 75 Indian cities across 13 states. All right, next up, this video is sponsored by Finity, a Bengaluru-based fintech startup that allows you to invest in more than 5,000 mutual funds, which might seem a bit overwhelming. That's a lot of funds to choose from, but with their smart recommendation engine, they're able to find mutual funds that are a perfect fit for you. And the best part is that they're actually focusing specifically on passive investors with their platform. People like me who prefer to invest in a stress-free long-term way. The platform was started in 2018 and is currently being used by more than six lakh people who are all benefiting from Finity's zero commission approach. So if you're the kind of person who just wants to see their money grow over time without learning a bunch of financial jargon or high-level investment strategies, then Finity may be the platform for you. 
We'll be putting a link to their app in the pinned comment and the description down below. So be sure to check that out. And I just wanted to say too that I think their app store reviews and their score speak for themselves here. People are really loving this platform. But we're also going to be putting a link to their YouTube channel in the description and the pinned comment down below. So be sure to check that out as well if you're interested in investing because they post multiple videos every single week. And thanks again to Finity for sponsoring this video. All right, next up in the news, does Paytm have a forgotten co-founder? There's a man named Ashok Kumar Saxena. He's a US resident who is originally from India, and he's claiming that in September of 2001, he was a co-founder of Paytm along with Vijay Shekhar Sharma. He signed an agreement, and based on this agreement, he invested 27,000 500 rupees into the startup, which in today's conversion would be 20 lakh rupees. And based on this investment, he would be a 55% stakeholder in Paytm. And Vijay Shekhar Sharma would be a 45% stakeholder in Paytm. What do you think of that? <laughs> So he's trying to stop Paytm's IPO based on this information. He unearthed some documents this last summer, which according to him prove that this was the case, that he's a co-founder and he deserves to have this stake in the company. And so he's urging the Securities and Exchange Board of India to stop the IPO, which let me remind you, is going to be the largest in Indian history. Now, Ashok was in fact a director of the company between 2000 and 2004, at which point he's claiming he was wrongfully removed from his position as a director. And he's also claiming that he never saw any of the shares that he was promised based on the agreement that he signed with Vijay Shikhar Sharma, who he's claiming was his co-founder. Paytm, of course, has a very different story about this. They're saying that that was not a definitive agreement, but rather a letter of intent. But in spite of this, they say that he was given shares but that in 2004, he had lost interest in the company. And so he transferred those shares to an unnamed Indian firm and stepped down as director. So these are two very conflicting stories. I guess the truth is going to come out in the next couple of weeks and months leading up to Paytm's IPO. This is very interesting timing. It's 20 years later, and Ashok Kumar Saxena has said that the reason he didn't come out about this earlier is because he had misplaced some crucial documents which would have actually proved his case. And also he claims that there were some family health problems along the way which kind of stopped him from coming out about it or perhaps being able to prioritize it. If there's some validity to his claims, this could have serious implications for Paytm's future, for the success of their IPO. This is 55% that he's claiming was his stake in the company or the stake that he deserves to have. So if he wins this case, that would be a big deal. But I'll let you guys decide who's right and who's wrong here. Is this a case of someone being jealous and after all these years, he finally wants to take something that he doesn't really deserve? Or is this a David and Goliath story where Paytm has done wrong by this guy and he's actually in the right and he deserves to be vindicated and he deserves to get the stake that is owed to him, this 55% stake. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and tell me your thoughts on this situation because it's pretty intense. This is like something out of a Bollywood movie. All right, next up in the news, online travel booking platform Ixigo has filed for a 1,600 crore rupee IPO, 750 crore rupees of which would be in the form of primary shares and 850 crore rupees of which would be in the form of secondary shares. Ixigo was founded in 2007. Their total user base is 250 million users and they're currently the second largest online travel aggregator in India with a market share as of the financial financial year of 2021 of 12% putting them second only to make my trip. Now, when it comes to revenue, they've actually seen an increase since the financial year of 2020 from 113 crore rupees to 138.4 crore rupees, which is impressive considering the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. But what's even more impressive is the fact that they are a profitable company. In the financial year of 2020, they saw a loss of 26.6 crore rupees, but now they're seeing a profit of seven 7.53 crore rupees. 
All right, next up in the news, just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how online grocery delivery startup Grofers was piloting 15-minute express delivery in Gurugram. Now, it looks like they've expanded this 15-minute delivery service across 10 cities here in India, and they're actually planning to push things even further. In the next couple of months, they want to reduce that number from 15 minutes down to 10 minutes, which I'm really curious to know your thoughts on. In the previous video where we talked about Grofers, there were a couple of people talking about how this might put a lot of pressure on delivery boys, and it also might increase that culture in the consumer market of impatience. We want things to be done fast, instantly. But it seems like now there's no going back. This is something that's happening with Grofers. We're seeing it also with Swiggy's Instamart and Dunzo. So it might be something that's irreversible. But again, I wanna hear your thoughts on it in a comment down below. And another piece of Grofers related news is that it actually looks like they are a unicorn. This has not been confirmed yet by Grofers at the time of us filming this video, but according to multiple media reports, their $120 million funding round led by Zomato and Tiger Global and SoftBank's Vision Fund 2 has been successful. So India apparently, allegedly has a new unicorn, which is something, of course, that's very exciting. All right, moving on to some acquisition news now. We have a historic moment happening right now in the crypto space, the first time ever that two blockchain networks are merging together. We have Indian Polygon and Hermes Network. And this deal is worth $250 million. Of course, it's not gonna be happening with dollars, it's gonna be happening with Matic tokens. This is the token of Polygon. And when this deal is complete, when the merger is finished, this will be a company called Polygon Hermes. And the Hermes token will cease to exist and Polygon's token, Matic, will be the only one left. Now, I am not an expert when it comes to blockchain or cryptocurrency, I'm not sure if you can tell, but one thing that I do know is that in the world of Ethereum, transaction costs are high. And this is something that Hermes has been working on quite diligently. They wanna solve this problem, and they've been doing that through zero-knowledge roll-up technology. This technology has allowed them in some cases to reduce transaction costs as much as 90% by combining multiple transactions into one, thereby reducing the load on the Ethereum network. And so by merging with Polygon, this new entity is gonna be able to build very financially compelling solutions on top of the Ethereum network for their users, for their customers, for people who are a part of this Polygon Hermes network. All right, next up in the acquisition news, Dream Sports, which is the parent company of fantasy gaming unicorn Dream 11, has acquired Indian mobile gaming developer Rolocule Games. They're behind games like Dead Among Us, Bowling Central, Motion Tennis, and Dance Party. After the acquisition, Rolocule Games will be rebranded to Dream Game Studios, and the company's founder, Rohit Gupta, is gonna be leading this new entity in building premium interactive mobile games under Dream Sports sports. All right, moving on to some funding news now. SaaS-based API development platform Postman has raised $225 million in a funding round led by Insight Partners at a $5.6 billion valuation, which is a pretty big jump from their $2 billion valuation in 2020. And it also makes them the most valuable SaaS unicorn in India, beating Browser Stack, which is currently valued at $4 billion. Postman is currently being used Used by more than 17 million developers across 500,000 companies, including 98% of the world's Fortune 500 companies. And they're gonna be using these fresh funds to hire more employees, invest more deeply into their API platform, and also build their community of developers. All right, next up in the funding news, bike taxi aggregator platform Rapido has raised $52 million in a funding round led by Westbridge Capital. Rapido currently has 15 million customers and 1.5 million driver partners across 100 cities in India, but they're planning to use some of these fresh funds to increase the number of customers using their platform to 50 million in the next 18 months. The remaining funds will be used to build their brand, hire more employees, and expand their market share. All right, next up in the funding news, another Thrasio-style startup, Upscalio, has raised $42.5 million 
dollars from Presight Capital. This five-month-old startup wants to invest in and partner with digital-first brands to scale their business by between 5 to 10x while maintaining their profitability. And they're going to be selling the products of these brands on platforms like Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra, and Nika. If these brands perform well, then the long-term goal of Upscalio will be to fully acquire them, thereby providing the founders of these startups with lucrative exits. And the last piece of funding news that I have for you guys this week is that fintech startup Smallcase has raised $40 million in a funding round led by Faring Capital. So Smallcase is making it easier for people to get into investing by building little baskets of stocks, which they call small cases. And their goal is to create a small case for every kind of investor. And so far, it seems like they're doing a pretty good job because they currently have 3 million people using their platform. And these people are investing $2.5 billion per year. They're going to be using these fresh funds to strengthen their technology platform and also create new investment products for retail investors. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed for some reason, then now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Also, as always, thanks to our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hectacorns. I know I say it every week, and so it probably seems like something that has lost its meaning and I'm just repeating it mindlessly, but I really do mean it when I say that the fact that you guys are taking money out of your lives that you could be spending on other things and you're sending it our way to financially support what we're doing here, it really does mean a lot to me and to the rest of the Backstage with Millionaires team. So thank you guys. And thanks as well to this week's sponsor, Finity. They are, like I said, a Bengaluru-based startup, which is exciting for us because we get to promote a fintech startup in this ecosystem and in this city. And it's also exciting because they are our third sponsor. This is something that we're relatively new to, but they believe in us and our content enough to sponsor it. So. Thank you so much. But even if you can't afford to financially support what we do here and you're watching this video right now, just the fact that you've made it this far is plenty of help. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires and I will see you in the next one.